The stroke panel in Affinity Publisher allows you to create a range of different effects such as dashed lines, pen strokes and arrows. For example, I have here a menu that I've been working on and I want to add some dividing lines and frames to improve the overall flow and layout of the menu. So to begin, I'll start by drawing out a new border around the edge of my double page spread. I'll select the rectangle tool from the tools panel, but before drawing out the shape, I'll take a moment to assign the rectangle stroke and fill settings. In this instance, I want to remove the rectangle's fill, leaving just the shape's outline. So I'll go to the fill options on my context toolbar and I'll choose to remove the fill. Now we'll assign the stroke a color. Selecting the stroke option on the context toolbar, I want to make the stroke use the same color red that I've used elsewhere in my document. If I know the red color's exact CMYK blend, I could choose to manually input those figures below, but instead I'm going to take advantage of the inbuilt color picker. I'll click drag over the color picker icon and choose to sample the red from the document below, hovering over the red color and then eventually releasing my mouse button when I'm happy with its selection. With my color sampled, I'll then single click on the color well to apply it to the stroke. Next, I'll make an adjustment to the stroke's width. Selecting the stroke options, I'll navigate to width and I'll increase the stroke width to four points. With my width and color now assigned, I'll begin to draw out the new rectangle using guides I've placed earlier to align the rectangle evenly to the page. Notice as we draw out the new shape, we can already see that the stroke has been applied to the outer edge of the rectangle, forming our border. Purely for visual aesthetics, I'll choose to round off the rectangle's corners, selecting absolute sizes and updating the field to two millimeters. The rounded corners will give the rectangle a slightly more subtle and friendly feel. We can edit the rectangle's stroke at any time, so for instance, I could reduce the stroke width down from four points to 1.5 for a more subtle effect. Next, I'll begin drawing out some lines using the pen tool. Selecting the pen tool from the tools panel, we'll start by drawing out a single line at the top of our page. I want this line to stretch over both spreads and intersect with the Oregon Trail logo. So I'll single click to add a node here on the left hand side and then holding shift and clicking to again position the second node here. Holding shift will constrain the pen tool to increments of 45 degrees, making it easier to create a perfectly straight line. You'll notice that the new line uses the same stroke settings that were applied to the first rectangle. Publisher will choose to hold the most recent set of attributes that have been applied to a shape or curve. We can always choose to edit the stroke properties by once again using the options on our context toolbar, or alternatively, we can go to the stroke panel. With the line selected, we can choose to change the line's end cap. We have the options to choose from round, butt, or square, and we can try out these options to see what we think looks best. I think in this case, actually, we'll stick with the round option. Before we continue using the move tool, I'll select both the line and the rectangle and send them to the bottom of the layer stack. So despite intersecting the Oregon Trail logo, we can now see the logo clearly. Going back to our pen tool, we can make some adjustments to the drawing of the burger below. If we take a closer look at the line style of the burger, we can see that the lines have been created using a pressure profile. The lines taper off to form an uneven and more natural looking stroke. We can choose to create a similar pressure profile to simulate this effect. We'll go down to the pressure profile section on the stroke panel, and here we can create a pressure profile by adjusting the graph below. I'll start by single clicking to add a new node in the center of our graph. I'll then double click on the far right node and drag this to the bottom of the X axis, creating a nice smooth taper. Finally, we'll also select the first node by double clicking it and reducing its position slightly, reducing the starting thickness of the stroke and creating a slight teardrop shape effect. We can adjust this center node to make the effect more aggressive or more relaxed. To help create a more organic stroke with the pen tool, I'll make sure to use the smart node option on the context toolbar and I'll also have the rubber band mode selected. I'll momentarily toggle snapping off and begin drawing out, using this new pressure profile, some of the final lines on this piece of tomato. We can go back with the node tool, and make some minor adjustments, and potentially change these two nodes here to sharp. I'll then press escape to deselect the curve. With my line deselected, I can begin to draw out some additional lines to add shading to the edge of the tomato. Each time I finish drawing out a new curve using the pen tool, 
I'll press Escape to deselect. Deselecting the curve allows me to quickly create a new curve rather than adding to the existing line. This allows me to quickly transition from one curve to another, allowing me to create a number of curves quickly and efficiently. At any point I can use the Move tool to select the strokes we've made and make changes to the stroke width or pressure profile. So for instance I could select these end lines using the Move tool and holding Shift and go ahead and reduce the width. We could select another selection of lines and this time choose to adjust the pressure profile and we can increase or decrease the nodes to give us a more dramatic or aggressive effect. So far we've only used the pressure profile with the pen tool but as we're using Publisher we could take full advantage of the designer persona and use the vector pencil tool using its stabilizer function to create some nice flowing arrows. So I'll go to the designer persona and I'll select the pencil tool. We'll set the stroke width to 8 points and I'll choose to add an arrowhead style using the stroke start and end settings. The start and end settings allow us to apply shapes such as arrowheads or data marks at the beginning or end of our stroke. For this example I'm going to select the curved arrowhead and apply it to the end of the stroke. Finally we'll also set a new pressure profile, this time creating a smooth cone shape where the stroke width begins at a single point and gradually increases in size. So I'll click the reset button on the graph and begin creating a new curve. I'll once again add a new node in the center. This time we'll double click on the first node and drag this to the bottom and then we'll readjust this central node to create a nice smooth curve. Finally, with the stabilizer option turned on and its length set to 60, we'll start carefully drawing out some nice flowing arrows. Instead of using the pressure profile, we can instead change our line style from solid to dashed. So we'll deselect the arrow and select the dashed line style. We'll then choose to reduce the stroke width to three points and we'll select the square end cap. I'll then use the pencil tool to draw out a new arrow. The dashed line options on the stroke panel will allow us to set the length and gap between each dash and the space in between. The fields with the solid line below represent the dashes and the fields with the dark grey line underneath represent the gaps. You can click drag on the light or dark grey lines underneath the fields to increase or decrease the field's value. You can also choose to input the dashed line's field length or spacing manually. So for instance, I know I want the line to be one point wide and the gap between them to be two. If we only fill out the first two fields in the dashed line options, the pattern will naturally repeat just using the first two numbers. However, we could choose to populate all six fields. For example, if I draw out a third arrow, again using the vector pencil tool, we can then set the dashed lines to something like one, two, three, two, six, four, to create an uneven dashed line effect. We can also change the end cap to create different effects. If I set the cap style to round, and then reduce one of the line's lengths to zero, it will instead create a dot rather than a dash allowing you to introduce dots and dashes into the same line. Moving back into the publisher persona and selecting the pen tool, I can go ahead and create a number of dashed lines that are entirely made out of dots. Making sure that we have the rounded end cap selected and the dashed line setting to 0, 2.4. I'll then use the pen tool and begin adding in some dividing lines to the page. If I turn snapping on, I can begin snapping these lines to the guides. I'll quickly adjust this last line we've produced to sit behind the Oregon Trail Smokehouse logo by pressing Command Shift Left Square Bracket on Mac or Control Shift Left Square Bracket on Windows. Rather than using the round end cap setting, we could instead utilize the butt end cap to quickly draw out a checkered pattern. If I change the stroke width to four points, change the end cap to butt, and then change our dashed line settings to 1, 1. I can begin drawing out a single line using the pen tool. Then with the move tool selected and holding command on Mac or control on Windows, I'll click drag to duplicate the line, pulling the new line down and offsetting it by one square. I'll then select both the new and original line and once again click drag duplicate, but this time whilst holding shift to keep both lines aligned and again reposition this behind the Oregon Trail logo. Under the dashed line options in the stroke panel, 
you have an additional option called Phase. Adjusting the phase allows you to manually shift the dashed line style position. It's worth noting, you can only adjust the phase settings if the balanced lined option is not in use. Finally, there's a function called Balanced Lines. The Balanced Lines function overrides exact line measurements and instead chooses to space out the dashes and gaps evenly, symmetrically matching corners and ensuring that there are no partial lines or gaps at the end of the line. So using the Move tool, I'll select this rectangle shape below Make It Your Own and I'll change the stroke style from Solid to Dashed. I'll make a small adjustment to the Dashed Lines field, changing 4 to 3 and then populating the second two fields to 5 and 3. We'll also make sure that the Balanced Dashed Pattern option is selected. With the Balanced Line option on, we can see that it affects the corners particularly, creating a nice symmetrical shape. And there we go, that was how to use the Stroke panel to apply stroke attributes to lines, curves and shapes to create a range of different visual effects such as dashed lines, brush strokes or arrows. I hope you found this interesting and thank you for watching.